Hello everybody, this is Kavya Shrita and welcome to yet another interesting video in Preptide. So in CSIR Net Life Sciences series, today we'll be talking about Unit 1 and Subunit C wherein we'll be talking about various interactions which are seen in living organisms. Interactions such as van der Waals forces, electrostatic, hydrogen bonding, hydrophobic interaction and also covalent bonding. So we will have a look at all of this and all of this is in our syllabus. So this is the unit one syllabus uh, which is molecules and their interactions relevant to biology. I have already dealt with structure of atoms, molecules and chemical bonds. Now I will be dealing with subunit C which is stabilizing interactions and then I will go to B. So depending upon which is needed first I will be dealing with that. Then I will go to everything and yeah, I will almost cover all the units. So in the biological interactions, we'll be talking about different bonds which are formed and I will make a flowchart for us to interpret it in an easier manner. So we can divide the bonds into whether they are covalent or non-covalent. Now this non-covalent can further be divided into two types that is ionic interactions which are also called as the salt bridge and the non-ionic interactions. So in the non-ionic interactions we have further four types of interactions and they are hydrogen bonds, van der Waals interactions, electrostatic interactions and hydrophobic interactions. Hydrophobic. Now this van der Waals interaction can be further divided into three types based on uh, whether it is that is the interaction is between two dipoles that is two permanent dipoles or whether it, we, it is between uh, one permanent dipole and the other one is induced dipole and the second one is is sorry third one is whether the attraction is between two non-polar substances. So now instead of writing everything over here and making it clumsy, I prefer going on to the next slide and explaining everything separately. But firstly before that I'll just give you a brief introduction. So there can be uh, covalent and non-covalent bonds in a biological interaction. So the covalent bonds when we are talking about covalent bonds, firstly, let's talk about electronegativity. So in the previous video, we have talked about electronegativity increasing as we move from the left to right, from the left to right in a periodic table. So when there is hydrogen over here and helium here, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine we need to remember few electronegativities so hydrogen electronegativity is 2.1 okay i'll write it with another color electronegativity of hydrogen is 2.1 of lithium it is 1 beryllium it's 1.5 boron is 2 carbon is 2.5 so it just increases by 0.5 nitrogen is 3 Oxygen is 3.5, fluorine is 4. So if you remember electronegativities of few atoms, then we can use them to find whether it is a covalent bond, a polar covalent bond or an ionic bond. So that is pretty much useful for us. When we look at sodium, magnesium, uh, let's skip few elements. I'll directly go to sulfur and chlorine. That's it. Let's just remember only these. Sodium it's 0.9, magnesium is 1.2, sulfur which is just beneath the oxygen it is 
it's decreased by 1 chlorine is 3 it's just beneath fluorine so if we just remember the electronegativities of these elements then we can use it for to find whether it's covalent non-covalent or ionic as i have already said so now let's talk about the three different bonds covalent in which it's non-polar and polar and ionic interactions so now we have looked upon the electronegativities in the previous slide so uh, let's just consider the covalent bond in covalent bond the electronegativities which is represented by this symbol should be less than 2 and in ionic interactions the electronegativity should be greater than 2 Now if you look at the non-polar or also the metallic uh, interactions, the electronegativity should be less than 5. That is less, sorry, less than 0 0.5. And in polar covalent, it should be between 0 0.5 and 2 electronegativity. So now also let's look at some examples. If you look at chlorine, which is bonded with chlorine, the electronegativity of chlorine is 3. Right. So 3 minus 3 is equal to 0. So here it is less than 0. When same uh, type of atoms bond, that is the first example. And also when two different item, uh, atoms bond, but they are almost having similar electronegativity. Like let's consider um, H is bonding with um, carbon. Yeah, H is bonding with carbon. So when we look at this example, it is 2.5 minus 2.1. Carbon is having an electronegativity of 2.5. So this gives us an electronegativity overall of 0.4. So this is also less than 0.5. So when we are having two atoms of same type or two atoms of different type, which is having electronegativity less than 0.5, then it comes under non-polar covalent bond. And in the second example, we see that bonding is happening between hydrogen and chlorine. So electronegativity of hydrogen is 2.1 and then of chlorine is um, 3. So 3 minus 2.1 gives us 0.9 electronegativity. So this is greater than 0.5. So this is a polar covalent bond. And water is also a type of co polar covalent bond in which there is sharing of electrons between hydrogen and oxygen wherein oxygen is giving one electron and hydrogen is giving one electron so it's a polar covalent bond wherein electronegativity of hydrogen is 2.1 and oxygen is uh, 3.5 so the difference will be approximately uh, 3 minus 2 is 1 so it's 1.4 electronegativity so this is also a polar covalent bond but when the electronegativity is greater than 2 it comes under ionic interactions and also ionic interactions example is NaCl wherein oppositely charged atoms are coming together they are attracted and when they are attracted they form lattice because ionic interactions do not have directionality. There is no directionality. When we dissolve NaCl in water, NaCl completely dissolves to give rise to Na plus atom, sorry, Na plus ion. When it is charged, you call it ion and Cl minus ion. And water completely bind with it. So because it is Na plus, uh, the O part of water, that is oxygen part, binds with it because it is having negative charge. And because chlorine is having negative charge, H part of the atom binds with it, that is hydrogen, because it is having partial positive charge. I'll also explain about the partial positive and partial negative charges. So now let's look at the dipole and the dipole moment. When we consider the same example of HCl, which is a polar covalent bond, we see that hydrogen is carrying an electronegativity of 2.1 and chlorine is carrying an electronegativity of 3. So this is having an overall electronegativity difference of 0.9, which makes it a polar covalent bond. So now 
this hydrogen carries a partial positive charge compared to chlorine and chlorine carries a partial negative charge when there are two equal and opposite charges which are separated by a distance then this is called as a dipole and when you want to have a look on what a dipole moment is it is represented by mu which is a charge a product of charge and distance so multiplication of charge and distance gives us the dipole moment 